a real simple subject, like say heroes. Who is your hero? Okay. So you'll write the question like, who is your hero? And they will they can either write down the name or my hero is a very basic kind of sentence structure, and then get them to kind of think about it and say, okay, well, do you want to do a little bit of acting to it? Do you want to? Can you? How would your hero react if this happened? Okay. You don't want to make it over the top as well. Like you don't want to. The thing is, with your students, you have to gauge them. And when you go into that classroom in the first couple of weeks, you, you don't expect to say like, oh, that lesson went terrible, this is gonna be a horrible year. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have to try to figure out what your students are like as well, right? You wanna do some diagnostic, you're kind of looking at them and say, okay, what is their range? Are they higher end, are they super low end? Sometimes you'll have students that just aren't interested in learning English, and it's not your fault, okay? It's not that you're, because you're an English speaker, you know, they don't like you. It's because sometimes students say, well, I'm never leaving Korea, so why do I have to learn English? Okay? And actually, I heard a student say that to me once. I said, that's actually not bad, <laughs> you know? Unless you want to understand a movie, but then they're like, oh, well, we have subtitles. I said, but it's, like, say watching the, uh, Dark Knight Rises is not as fun when you have to read and then look up and then read and then look up. You know, what are they saying to each other, okay? So sometimes you'll have those students that are, they can be bright, but they won't participate as often as you'd like them to. But a really cool lesson is um, in Korea they actually have listening tests, okay? And what you can do is you can take song lyrics, okay? And what you can do is it'll be like a fill in the blank. So as a song is being played, the students have to fill in the, the word of the lyrics, so they have to listen very, very closely. Something could happen. The TV doesn't work, or the sound system's broken, or somebody stole the remote, or whatever, right? So you have to think about, or be prepared for, and again, you can't write it, you, I'm not expecting a lesson plan like, oh, uh, in case TV breaks, do this, <laughs> okay? So you, you can't really plan for it, but you have to almost be flexible, so you have to think about if something happens, if one of your resources is gone or unavailable, okay, how can you adapt it? And you might have to do it on the fly, okay? Like I had a PowerPoint that I was teaching to my kids, and it was like slide after slide after slide, lots of cool pictures, okay? PowerPoint's broken. Okay, so what's gonna happen? Well, you have a marker and you have a whiteboard or a chalkboard in some cases, okay? You gotta do it, you have to write and you have to go along, okay? So you have to try to be flexible Hey, how are, how are you doing? They'll say, I'm fine, thank you. And you? It is robotic. Like, they could have a gunshot wound to the chest and say, oh my god, you okay? They'll say, I'm fine, thank you, and you? Okay, it's just, it's really robotic. So what you want to do is you want to try to get them to express themselves a little bit, you know, they'll have difficulty with it, right? But you want to try to get them to express themselves a little bit more than just, I'm fine, right? Okay, you can use videos, pictures, or even quick games, okay? Uh, you can use, oh, this is actually a great warm-up game, a uh, tennis ball game. Uh, what you do, and of course I forgot to bring a tennis ball, but that's just me. Um, what you do is you come in and you say, okay, we're going to play a game. And make sure you enforce the rules, because if you're using a tennis ball, sometimes kids are like, oh, I have a tennis ball. Whip, right? And they'll hit somebody, right? you got to really enforce it. So what you'll do is you'll say, okay, today we're going to talk about countries, okay? And you have a tennis ball. So you take the tennis ball and you throw it to a student, and they'll... Whoever catches it has to say a country, and then they throw the ball back to you, okay? And you can operate it on, say, sentence structure, you can say emotions, okay, stuff like that. It's a good, it's a good way to kind of get them, get them started. Very simple, very basic. When I speak, you don't, okay? Respect other students, okay? And if the kids don't understand what you're saying, you can kind of get your co-teacher to kind of help you out a little bit, right? So yeah, each rule in a small set of rules is more important than each rule in a large set of rules. So again, don't make it overly complicated, just know what's ex the students should know what's expected of them and what is, what is not uh, permitted in the classroom, right? So you, you kind of want to minimize the violence, but it's not really violence, it's just kind of kids being kids. Establishing a business-like atmosphere, which you can tell I'm terrible at, right? Or don't smile until Christmas. This is. This is a tip I've, I've heard from some people, and they say it works. The advantage is, is that you're new to these schools, so they don't know who you are. Let the kids know that certain things, uh, if you want to have a lesson and a kid's messing around, just say, like, even if they're being really boisterous, you can just say, okay, you can take their chair and just kind of pull them aside, and then like make them face the wall or something. I've, I've seen teachers do that as well. 